Hi everyone, I'm Cece Stein with The Real Malibu 411 and we're here with Mark Abramson, Senior Watershed Advisor with the Santa Monica Bay Restoration Foundation. Hello. And we're getting our weekly update on the Malibu Lagoon Restoration Project. Okay, Mark, what do we got going on this week? This week is all about dewatering. Yay! So uh, we just did our 48-hour testing procedures. We're waiting for a couple results to come back from the lab. But everything we've seen so far looks great. Um, and uh, as soon as we get those result backs, we'll make sure they're within our limits. And once they're within our limits, the plant gets kicked on. Okay, so for those of us who uh, don't thoroughly understand the dewatering process, can you explain that? Yeah, um, essentially, as we've been digging down and hitting the actual wetland soils, you start to get groundwater coming up into the system, right? And uh, because it's basically at or below sea level. And so in order for us to continue to do work, they're going to move the water from the channels that you can see here in the background. And then there's a berm right along the backside where that blue hose is on the back of that, which is our temporary dewatering basin. Water will get pumped into that dewatering basin. It then gets sucked out of that dewatering basin to the treatment plant over there. And then ultimately it'll go through the treatment process and get discharged in the ocean. Okay, I have a question about the water being discharged into the ocean. Yes, now, a lot of us assume and or know that the water in the ocean is polluted. Okay, so are we further polluting the ocean by sending it out there? We have really strict requirements on the water quality that can be released from here. So the water, just by the way, the water that's in the system now is way dirtier than the water that we're discharging, right? We've got some copper in the waters now, we have higher bacteria in the water now, we have high turbidity in the water now, we have residual chlorine in the water now. All of those will have to be treated down to the level where I'm allowed to discharge into the ocean, which means it'll have no impact on human health and it has to be protective of aquatic wildlife health too. So the different constituents can affect different things. For example, bacteria is what we're concerned with if we're recreating in the, in the surf. And that bacteria has to be discharged at lower levels than would make, would, would increase the risk of getting sick. Metals is more of an issue for aquatic wildlife. The, the levels that those have to be discharged at, again, they're at a safe level, so they protect aquatic wildlife, even if it's already dirtier than that in the background level. Okay, and this is, this is all data that you guys have accumulated over years and years and years and years of research. Years and years, and what's happening now, right? Because there's real-time issues here at the lagoon, from whatever's coming in through the groundwater, through, you know, whatever's in the water already, we have to be able to treat all that and make sure that what we're discharging is clean and safe. Okay, I, I've been looking at some of the footage that uh, Bob did uh, for Eco Malibu, uh, which was impressive footage, by the way. It was really great to be able to see the dewatering um, system up close um, and the process. So what I'm wondering is, is how long is that dewatering system plant going to be there um, right next to the colony homes? Uh, it, the worst case scenario is basically October 15th. Okay, so this is temporary. Oh yeah, totally temporary. Um, once we, you know. Aside from necessary. <laughs> yes, necessary and temporary. Once we're done working in the wetland itself and we don't need to dewater anymore, the plant will be gone. gone. Okay, and, and so even though it's a little bit of an eyesore, it's not only super necessary, but how, is it quiet? Yeah, uh, those it, are all running on electric pumps, the, that system there. It sounds like when you're up close to it, like one of those hand dryers that you hit on the wall. Nice. And so the electric pumps are quiet. Um, the pumps that they'll be using in here, I think, are also electric pumps. So the only uh, gas-powered pumps will be ones that my contractor uses while they're working during the Which day. During contractor's hours, correct? Yes. Okay. All right, Steve, do we have any other questions? Do you have uh, questions? I'm just wondering, are, are some of the pumps going to be running 24-7? The electrical night? pumps will probably be running 24-7 on certain times. Um, but again, they're, they're relatively quiet, and uh, we can put barriers around those to even muffle the sound if they become an issue. But Well, let me ask you a question about the opposition. Was that part of their issue was the actual dewatering plant itself kind of 
you know, looming over their homes or was that never even really brought up? That was never really brought up, but we knew that that would be um, an issue. And so we tried to prepare for it as much as we could. Um, we've provided some uh, access considerations for people that live over there and uh, uh, that might need access to the beach or to the path. Right. And, um, and that's why we cited that plant with electric pumps. That's why my guys are going to be pumping from the basin, which is the closest to the colony homes, with electric pumps. And then they'll move water around the site with portable pumps, which have to be portable because they're moving. They have so to move basically the every the consideration site. was taken. As much as we could think about. I mean, if there was something that somebody raised that we hadn't thought about, right. We'll try to fix it and try to address and it. And so far, nobody has raised any Nothing that we it. hadn't thought about, right? There was a couple of people that complained, I think, about uh, one of the gas-powered pumps. But, again, that's... And that's during the day, isn't it? It was temporary. They had one gas-powered pump that they ran at night when they were doing the testing. Um, but these were, you know, we basically built a system around that pump with all the sandbags. I don't know if in that video, I think it showed it. Right. Um, to, to muffle it, and that considerably lowered yeah, the volume. Dead so just... if we can fix it, we'll fix it. Okay, great. Okay, so why don't you just kind of uh, bring us up to date on everything else that's been going on around here? Whoa. <laughs> hey, there's, there's an attachment. <laughs> We're leashed. Um, what else has been going down? One of our nests cleared the O nest, which used to be right out there. Mm -hmm. And so they removed that vegetation. Uh, that was a duck nest. Is that the last nest? No. There was three baby ducks in that one that are floating around here somewhere. Um, the bridges are gone, I see. Bridges are gone, right? The last bridge was removed, I think, last Friday. Wow. Um, How about what else? Trash, is going on? trash update. Uh, you know, similar amounts of trash, similar types of trash. We found some more asphalt. We found some more concrete. I think they pulled out two more telephone poles that I saw. Right. You know, miscellaneous bottles, cans, plastic. It's all through any of the fill. Any and then more they really animals? haven't done a lot since, uh, they haven't done a lot since 4th of July, basically. Now they're, we're just waiting for the dewatering. So no more animals um, found? We found a couple of mice and voles over there when they were... Okay. Driving. Alive? All alive, all alive, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. And they were relocated. Um, and pretty much that's that's about it. It's gobies? Kind of busy. Any, any goby updates? No gobies. Everything's fine. The site's secure. Okay. And and Willie the weasel? Haven't seen Willie. <laughs> Just keeping tabs got, on Willie. I haven't even got a report on <laughs> Willie the weasel um, <laughs> since the last time. I, I, I still am not convinced that Willie... Willie is real um, and it might not be a cruel joke on everybody else. Well, we well. might have to track down Suzanne because I think she's got a, 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 a she, more personal she, relationship with Willie the Willie Weasel. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> or, or she's just, she's just the joke. Okay? okay, so the rest of the week. Tell us about the rest of the week here. Um, it's really going to be more dewatering, right? They're going to get the test back. They'll start up the system. They'll start to pump from the temporary basin. Um, once they get that low enough, the contractor will come in and start pumping the main channel when they they need some room in the temporary basin before they can work on the main channel. They'll pump the main channel into the basin and then we'll just be chasing it. How long do you think it'll take to, to, to get the water out of these channels here where they can do actually well, some physical work on them? With the pumps that they've got, no time at all. I mean, well, when you four say hours. Oh, really? They can drain these channels in four hours. It's just that I got to give them storage room in the other one. Okay. All right. Well, any more? See you boys? Uh, that answers a lot of my questions. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody. I'm Cece Stein with The Real Malibu 411 here with Mark Abramson, Senior Watershed Advisor with the Santa Monica Bay Restoration Foundation. And this is our weekly update at the Malibu Lagoon Restoration Project. Thank you. Okay, Mark, can you tell us a little bit about all that black muck all over those trucks over there? So this is, that come, that come, that came out of the channels, right? Various channels that were the, that used to be the A, B, and C channels. And that's that looking. black mess over there too, right? Yeah. Okay. And then, and the stuff on the back of the trucks. And so okay. what they do, and those are sealed trucks, so what they do is they scoop it up with whatever, an excavator. Right. Dump it in the back of the truck, and then any wet soils, regardless, they have to dry out before right. we can use them on site or take them off site. Right. Um, 
right? Because when we use them on site, you have to have certain compaction levels and you can't get that in wet soils. Right. And when you take them off site, you can't be dragging mud of down course. the street, of right? Course. So, and then there's certain uh, best management practices that they have it in place. Like for our site, anything that works on site that's in the mud or in the wet, even if it's just damp mud, we have a, a New Zealand mud snail protocol, yeah. which requires that they have to pressure wash the trucks with water that's above 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. So it's boiling water, and then the, the equipment has to sit on site and dry for 72 hours before it can leave the site. And that's just to prevent mud snails from being transferred from one system where we know we have them in this system to a system that currently doesn't have them. Gotcha. Around. We're just pulling out any trash that we find, even that's just on the side, so that's that so okay, this it is doesn't get this, this is an empty canister of motor oil. That's beautiful. That was in the water. Great. That's got to be really healthy. A lot of plastic. What do we got here? Oh, a plastic oh. shoe. And the world.